Hello my friends and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to talk about the topic quality versus travel friendly and budget because we just want to create fun travel videos. So usually I always travel with all the gear I have because I want to achieve the best quality possible. Therefore I got this big, big ass camera backpack usually filled with everything I own. And this thing becomes very heavy, especially if I'm going to hike. For me, it's important to create an amazing video in the end, which is cinematic, which looks great, but still the experience of the travel itself shouldn't get lost in the process of creating a video, you know? And that's why I needed to compromise. And this tiny thing here, everyone knows it, you know it too, the GoPro is a big helper. Uh, in this case, it's a Hero 5. It's one of the best GoPros ever. It's super cheap and trust me, you don't really need the newer GoPros. I'm going to tell you why later. But first, let me show you some of the insane clips I took with the GoPro in the Bavarian Alps. If I use the GoPro for travel videos, I film in Superview and uh, 2.7K resolution ProTune. I found with this setting you have the most room for uh, post-production, especially if you want to stabilize your video, in real steady software. Um, because that's the part where I can recommend you to buy an older GoPro instead of the newer GoPro 8 or whatsoever is the newest one at the moment because you can already stabilize your GoPro footage with the real steady software like the GoPro 8 and you have better controls, it's all manual. The results are even better with the real steady software than with the built-in hyper smooth feature from the GoPro 8 because you have more control about the output of the video in the end. Here we have the Sony a7 III with the Semyang 14mm and the Gion Weeble S. On the other side we see the GoPro Hero 5 with just a pole like that. That's nothing special and it doesn't stabilize the footage at all but I keep it on the GoPro all the time because it helps to carry it around. And as you can see, the picture quality is superb and the stabilization is on point. Trust me, as I saw both clips next to each other, I needed to check the name of the file so I can see if it's from Sony or GoPro, because it, oh, yeah. I, I couldn't see any difference. <laughs> hey, this is, it's not that easy to hold the GoPro and the thing at the same time in the right direction. <laughs> the one weakness the Sony has, of course, it's its weight and you need to set up the gimbal and you need to switch lenses and all that takes so much time and effort. The GoPro, by the way, that's so small and tiny and you can use it in, in every situation even underwater and especially I bought an underwater case there it is bought it for 50 bucks I guess for DSLRs and guess what I've never used it because um, I was too lazy in the end to use it because I rather use the GoPro in the low light situation you can see that the GoPro has a disadvantage because the stabilization only works in post which means if the shutter speed goes down and you move in the GoPro in different directions, you will see motion blur. So for low light especially, I can tell you the Sony will dominate the GoPro. In every case, literally, but only in low light. And you don't travel too much in low light, I would guess. All right, guys, that's the high dynamic range test. I'm outside on my balcony with a beautiful sunset view and this is the strongest lighting condition I could find.
Okay, my conclusion. Yeah, I'm only going to use the GoPro for the wide angle shots because it's so much more convenient for travels. And if I really need something more professional, if there's a job where I need to produce a good quality video, then I'm definitely going to use the gimbal setup and everything. But for run and gun shoots, mm, I will never miss the GoPro again. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos, especially the Norway travel videos or the Bavarian Alp hike video. You won't regret it, I promise you.